Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm coming to you with a problem. I think it's from the APMO 1996 competition. And the conditions are uh, let ABC be the length of the three sides of any triangle. This is any triangle at all. It makes no difference what type of triangle, scalene, equilateral, whatever. It says um, <clears throat> we're supposed to prove this result right here in the blue. Okay, I won't read it to you, but we're supposed to prove this res this result uh, in the in the blue text here. And um, I didn't understand it at first, and I realized you it, it uh, the the triangle condition forces the sum of any two of the sides to be greater than the other side. And for these designations, that would be the same thing as saying a plus b minus c is greater than zero. Or you could say a plus b is greater than c, where a plus b are two of the sides, and uh, c is another side. And of course, that's going to happen three times. So we have these three conditions, which need to hold for this inequality even makes sense. If if these conditions didn't hold, we would have negative radicands here. We taken we we talking about complex numbers here. So uh, that's the that's the constraint that the the triangle condition uh, places. Now it turns out there's a very fancy result that I don't know how to prove. It's called Karamata's inequality. And it, uh, you need, you need. There's two, there's two conditions that have to be met. Um, you have to um, majorize, and I'm going to tell you what that means. And then also, uh, you have to. The function has to either be convex or concave. Now, for us, we're going to be looking at finding a concave function. Now, y'all, you know, what they mean by concave? Uh, it, that's equivalent to just saying uh, f right here for concave. Um, if it's concave, that it would reverse the sense of this inequality. This inequality would be become less than or equal to. But uh, anyway, that's that's equivalent to just saying f double prime of x is less uh, than zero in in the domain of interest or interval domain. Um, so less than zero. I guess less than or equal to zero, probably. Okay. So you see what's going to happen here. We're going to we're going to come up with the square root function turns out to satisfy this property. In fact, I can go I, I, the square root function. If f of x is equal to the square root of x, then f double prime is less than zero. And you can see that by the law of exponent rule for, for, for in calculus. We'll do that on the next screen, though. So, uh, again, if this is true, this inequality would be read less than. Or equal, OK. For f double prime, this is kind of a dual statement. They 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 wrote it for convex, and then you reverse the inequality if it's if it's concave. So really, there's only two things to do, and we're done with this. All right. So what do we mean by majorizing? Okay. Well, um, so we must show, and this is really where most of the work's done. And it's not too much work, but this symbol here means majorize. That looks like a an equal a greater than symbol, but this stands for majorize. Okay. Uh, means the same thing as majorize. They call it a majorization, I believe. Okay, but that symbol is what gets used to connote kind of a, a more general sense of greater than. Okay, and of course there's one for less than also. But uh, so here's here's the conditions. You have to show that each of the components, I mean that this this component plus this component plus this component sums up to A plus B plus C, which, which it does. You can see that just by examining right here that it is certainly true, okay? Uh, what we have going on here is we have an A here, an A here, and then a minus A. So 2A minus A is the A you see right there, okay? That's the first condition for showing that this sequence here, if you want to call these sequences or order triples, whatever you want to call them, uh, that's the first first condition is equality. Now, the next two conditions are uh, greater than or equal to. And so we're showing that this one plus this one is greater than this one plus this one. OK, these coordinates, whatever language you want to use to designate that. And so it's pretty clear that's true because this this when you sum up these two guys again, which is this one and this one. OK, uh, everything cancels out except you're, you're left with two A's. But we have a without the usual without loss of generality. We're going to go ahead and assume that A is greater than or equal to B, greater than or equal to C, strictly greater than zero. So if A is greater than or equal to B, you certainly get that uh, this is equal to 2A, which is greater than or equal to A plus B. And again, notice it switches from equality for the first check 
to two inequalities. All right. Now, the very last one we have to show, we have to show that A plus B minus C is strictly greater, is, is a greater than A. And that's pretty clear, right? Because um, uh, B minus C by this statement right here, B minus C would be greater than zero, right? B minus C would be greater than or equal to zero. And so uh, this, this, these three, uh, these, we check off on these three, okay? This one, this one, and in this statement right here are, are all true, which means that this, I guess you want to call it an ordered triple, majorizes this ordered triple, okay? So uh, we, we've taken care of the majorization part. We, we've, we found a sequence that majorizes. All right, now let's go to the next screen. And what we're going to be just showing is uh, that uh, for the square root function, f double prime of x is less than or equal to zero. Okay, let's move along to the next screen here. All right, now I, I, did, I didn't show all the work here, but uh, if you just, if you think of, um, if you write f of x, it's just f of x, uh, equals to x to the one half. All right. Um, okay, it's clear that f prime, uh, f prime at x This is just one of the most standard rules from calculus, right? Okay, is equal to one half. Um, x to the one half. To the minus one half, excuse me. The minus one half. You all remember that rule from calculus? You drag the exponent around to the front and then decrement it. Okay. And then, right, that would also, that would tell us that uh, f double prime of x, f double prime, okay, f double prime of x would be equal to uh, uh, minus one fourth, okay, running out of room here, uh, y'all let me come down here, uh, I'm kind of at the top of the screen here where I can't see because of the stupid zoom interface, but uh, the, you would get uh, f double prime of x okay and again back up to your f double prime of x would be equal to uh, minus one fourth times x to the minus three fourths or three halves excuse me x to the minus three halves Okay, and again, you drag the exponent around to the front and then decrement minus one half. So you see, we do get that this is less than uh, zero, right? And so for that reason, uh, we can uh, invoke uh, the uh, statement of Karamata's on the previous screen. I know that you can't see it anymore, but that's, that's what we can do right here. And we get the less than or equal to condition by just simply applying f not f double prime to each of these arguments and, and we get what we set out to prove so we got a qed here folks yeah you know, i wanted to show you this one because it um um i didn't see many solutions like this i think people used maybe jensen's i'm not sure um or there's other there's other ways more you know trigonometric i guess but i didn't see many people actually prove it using this, this kind of obscure result that I'd never really heard of. Okay, hope that helped.